gentlefolk, ferals, and domesticated cryptids. It is I, Optometron, back with episode 13 of Wonder Bathos. It is insane that we have done 13 of these now. We are well into season two, and we are not stopping anytime soon. I already have guests started to book for season three and beyond. Uh, it's been an incredible journey so far. I am so happy to have you guys here back again. Uh, and our guest tonight is 7D, or It's 7D, or Seven Deadly Sins. We're not really sure. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> so It's pretty much all of the above. <laughs> well, but, uh, what, what is we the like start? to go by 7D, but thank you so much, Optometron, for having me tonight. Um, Absolutely. It's uh, my Twitch URL. It's 7D. Um, it used to be The Seven Deadly Sins, or The Seven D Sins. Um, and it's only over time, I just like, uh, branding-wise, like, 7D is easier to say. It's not a mouthful, and... Uh, but also you can't make your name two letters, uh, you know, so right. that it just became it's 7D with the with the word. Um, but uh, but this has been my name for a long, long time uh, for uh, probably about 20 years. This has been my like, like, wow. Gamer handle. Oh, wow. Um, I was, I was going to literally guess... since Maple Story. Um, uh, wow. That was the, that's the first time I ever used it. Um, fun fact. Um, that was my first character ever on Maple Story um yeah so um and it and it came from actually first the first place it actually came from was i was actually playing um devil may cry 3 and all of the enemies were named after one of the seven deadly sins and so that so like in the game there's like lore for them right and it's like one of one of the seven deadly sins so i like i'm like oh what is what are the seven deadly sins and so i looked this up and then i'm like oh dante's inferno what is this book? Yes. So like 11 year old me is getting this insane, you know, like giant book. And I'm like, you read Dante's Inferno. It's at what, what age? 11 years old. 11. Uh, wow. It took a while. Um, I also did a, a whole lot of uh, not paying attention in middle school uh, and just read that and said, um, <laughs> I, I approve. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I turned it. Okay. Um, I probably should have studied a little bit more. I probably would have been a better college student um, if I had instead not read, uh, you know, the entire time I was in class. But whatever. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause for a second. <sighs> hold on, hold on. Uh, Inferno is one of the oldest recorded uh, books because it was hard to make books back then. And mm -hmm. also one of the most recognizable. Like every every depiction of hell, fire, or demons, or Satan – that that people believe in in Christian theology today, all bases, all of it is from that epic poem. So yes. uh, that can take you very far in life if you were to study that. You know what I mean? You you can use that. It is applicable in life. So as far as beyond college, well, I mean, and stuff. It, it's applicable because like it sets the fear of like reality in right. real fast. Like it, you know, like whether or not you believe in these ideals, it's like. These seven things, you know, taken to an extreme are like causing the downfall of humanity in some fashion. And like they, they're, you know, it gives examples sort of like, and it's, it's just, it's so scary how real it is. Um, right. And, but also like the, the picture that it paints of like, you know, the different layers and, and, uh, and just how deep the, you know, how it really goes and, and, and all the demons that it, that it depicts. It's just like, right. I just I, I fell in love with it. and I was just like, yeah, this this is so cool. But oh, but yeah. also but it also sort of like molded my character a little bit, like as a small child, because it's like, okay, these seven things, you know, I have to make sure that you know I'm, I'm not I'm not being too angry of a person, you know, wrath, and I'm I you know I'm not you know, uh, well, to, also... you know I'm not trying to jump in someone's pants, lust, you know, like right. Each right. one of the things has like a thing that you can try to you know become a better person and uh, exactly and, i think that's and I what... always appreciated that about the about the ideals of the the seven deadly sins is that you I... can you can use them to become a better person it, it's not just a completely negative aspect well yeah, exactly i think I, that's mostly what i took from it something you don't know about me is that i have three different translations of uh inferno on a bookshelf no next, to, ne next to my bed yes i have the original Yo. latin original latin translation i have um i'm a shaking your hand right now on the camera Thank uh, you. Uh, yeah Good there man. you go i'm man. shaking back 
uh, a modernized <laughs> version, and then I have one that's like more of a breakdown where it breaks down every single part and like gives you kind of definitions and kind of what it may have cool. meant. At the time. That was that was kind of what mine was because obviously, like you said, it was a very you know uh, it, it was something that you had to kind of interpret. Uh, so yeah, clearly, eleven year old me was not reading the original like non footnoted you were <laughs> digging into the psychology of like the duality of man at 11 years old which is yes. incredibly impressive and admirable so let me just say that that is that is awesome but that's kind of what i took from it too that that's exactly what it is the duality of man and like looking inside yourself and seeing like okay these are these are people and figures throughout history that are that are going through these tortures and stuff for like the decisions they made during life and like right. what and, you know, just Dante's and how do whole I journey. Yeah, and being able to analyze it and, and, and learn about yourself and realize, like, oh, maybe I'm doing that a little bit in my life. Like, right. maybe, maybe, you know, let's let's tone that down a little bit. Like, let's yeah, stay it, away it was from very eye-opening yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's that not open is that incredible. Uh, I, I was going to go so many different routes of that. I was like, dude, so there's, like, the Netflix anime. There's, like, the other anime that's, like, close to not being an anime and then uh, you know Dante's Inferno and dude there's there's just so many renditions and so much of that in pop culture and I, I love it I think it's great even in Full Metal Alchemist yeah. you know you got the same yeah really one soon. of my favorite cool. animes of all time um uh, like another one of the reasons that this is that this is my name um and and even uh one of the like main uh quotes from that is uh is no oh god i can't remember what his name is um starts with an h um the guy with glasses with blonde hair hogarth like older no. <laughs> I, um, I know i know who you're talking the, about but i can't the, remember it's like the, it's the german guy and he's yeah and he's talking about like the seven deadly, he like names the seven deadly sins and and the quote's like each one of these in excess will completely ruin a person and yeah and it starts like talking about like the balance of humanity and it's just like it, it's this like overarching like beautiful truth of the world that like I heard and as a small child I'm like oh my god like this is how I want to live my life like whoa yeah so, <laughs> that's so yeah, good uh, yeah, I, I kind of love that anime um and it's... Brotherhood is fantastic so. oh it's so good it's so good although I I do it's way better I love it I love the manga rendition a lot better but I did grow up on the original Full Metal Alchemist and so I do yeah, have a, a special place I have a special place in my heart for the original as well um so speaking of how like it molded your life and stuff, like you've now evolved your name or you're you're devolving it and trying to get down to just two two letters or two characters. Mm -hmm. Um what what is your future plans for streaming? Like what are your aspirations? Like what brought you into streaming? Like where tell well, where are you going? That's with a it? that's a beautiful question. Um just because where I started as a streamer was, you know, I was I was a stream monster, you know, uh, when Twitch really kind of blew up around the time that GDQ, um, Games Done Quick, became, uh, I, I actually think pretty much its first year, I'm trying to think what year that was, um, I want to say maybe 2015, okay. something like that, 2014, 2015, um, that's sort of like when Twitch blew up because speedrunning started to take hold and GDQ had its first run. And that's when I made my Twitch account, and I was like, wow, like, speedruns are really cool. I had, you know, always kind of seen videos of speedruns, you know, like, here and there, but never really, like, watched one. And then so watching some of them live, like, um, like, Ocarina of Time, for example, before, before GDQ's time, when I was figuring out what speedruns were, that was, like, the first game that I was like, man, I really love this game. Like, let's see what a speedrun of it is. And I don't know if you know anything about the history of the speedrun of Ocarina of Time, but when I first started looking at the speedrun for it, this the the world record was an hour and fifty two minutes. Wow! And it was it was thought that you had to complete all the child dungeons and beat Shadow and Spirit uh, as an adult. That's what people thought that you had to do to complete the game. And then it started people started figuring out more and more like you had to do less and less and yeah. like. Oh, you can just, you know, warp to blah, blah, blah. So, like, so I'm coming from, you know, the game is, you know, takes forever to beat and, and you know, um, and bit by bit, you know, they're, they're finding out more things about the game. Uh, and so, so as a chatter, like, see, seeing these games, like, at this live event and they're, they're done faster than you've ever seen before, 
like right. oh yeah this new this new strat chat we were trying to keep it on the low down but like you know here it is and i was just like my mind was blown like oh my god like i like, i want to do this like i want to be in a speed run event like i want to do this right so like that is that is at the heart of my twitch channel that's what i that's what i made it for initially like I, I I wanted to be a speedrunner and eventually do one of these events because um, I just the the thought of you know taking something that I loved and sort of making a a uh, not a um, a goal out of it if you will you know something right. that I enjoyed playing all the time taking it and being like hey I could I can make I could, I could whether it's a record of for myself or it's a you know a world record like right. The, this, the the aspect of speed running that I liked the most was that it was always like you were always getting better slowly. It was never you're comparing yourself to other people where like fighting games, for example, like that's 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 your best medium is like, how did I play versus this person versus, you know, this other yeah, person. But speed running um, is against yourself. But speed running, it's, yeah. it's against yourself. Like, oh, man, I finally hit that trick. Like, that feels so good. Like the just the the feeling of literally leveling up you know that's yeah it's there in speed running and i've i thoroughly enjoyed that and wanted to do that and um and as i started speed running the more i realized like oh man this shit's hard like <laughs> yeah it is like I, you I, got me stuck on the ocarina speed runs the last ocarina speed run i saw was the the goma it was like a, it's five minutes it was beating the game in five minutes and you yeah. can skip. And you do the wrong warp out of Goma, and you just yeah. go to like Spirit yeah, again, Temple as a child. I, no, I think you go to the Spirit Temple first, but then I think there's a second warp that you can use from the Spirit Temple to get into Ganon's castle. Um, yeah, the game is just so insane. broken now because it's like yeah, you, people have like figured out the code, you know, and and like that's so cool to see, like from from my perspective, where you know, fifteen years ago the game was. Like, oh, no, you have to do these things to beat the game. And, like, we're trying to do it as fast as possible. And then now, fast forward, like, now you're telling me the game's only five minutes? Well, that was, yep. like, two hours. Yeah. Like, the, the the whole concept, like, I just love that about speedrunning. When there's the other uh, spectrum, just... there's the other spectrum, too, where, like, even huge jumps, huge increments are awesome. You know, you go from an hour and a half to five minutes. But there's also, like, these world record speedrunners that are, like, I just want to do it two or three seconds better. It's faster. Yeah. yeah. Than, and than the number that, one spot. You know, just a couple frames faster. Like task yeah. bots out here speed running. <laughs> that's, that's the, that, that's, that was what I was going to get into was the, the thing that I ended up shying away from speed running was that, you know, speed running is so cool as a, as a commentator sport because you're not doing it right. right. You're just watching the game get broken. You're like, Whoa, this is so cool. Wait, that's a thing you can do that. Like, your your yeah. just your mind is just exploding. But the person that's doing it is like doing all these complicated hard inputs. Oh yeah, and yeah, like and you don't realize that like as have, a have you seen as a, as a spectator sport. But but yeah, there's there's a there's a certain point that like that you can once you land it with speed running, it's like man, it, there's just a wall that you'll hit eventually. Right. And, and if you're not like if you're not just speed running just because you you know you enjoy doing the fun thing you know breaking the game or or just going fast if you if you are like just really trying to push for a time and that's your goal you you eventually hit the wall and you're like oh like yeah <laughs> i'm i'm not enjoying this anymore um yeah it becomes it does become painful it does become painful sometimes i i can yeah. i can totally understand that so the only the it's... only world record leaderboard that I'm on is for Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, for, Ooh, nice! Yeah. That's an awesome game. Oh yeah, and my that's my claim to fame is I'm right there on the leaderboard, right next to Jack Septic Eye for uh, normal uh, boss rush time attack. And, Damn! Uh, yeah, very cool. But watching the people that have the number one spots, <laughs> it blows my mind. And right? they are so insanely talented. And watching them break this game over and over, and, and like not even break it, just manipulating the phys the in game physics to right. achieve what they do is absolutely incredible. It's so much fun to watch. Yeah, it's fun pushing the envelope, but <laughs> but like, but it's it's so mentally taxing because. Depending on what game you're running, I guess. You know, if it's just like a, um, let, let's say Temple Run, for example. Like, you know, real easy, just like oh, you're moving around. <laughs> like, you just got to run on the right, like, 
you know, speed running that, like, that's easy. You know, you're not doing anything hard, right? Like, or like, let's even take like the original Mario, for example. There's no crazy mechanics. You know, you're just, you're just moving right. You're, you're just jumping moving really fast, yeah. You're memorizing <laughs> boss pos- or enemy positions and best ways to jump from platform to platform. Yeah, I get that. But Those the more are- complicated that you that the game becomes, the more like branches branches of like things that you have to keep in mind and. It's just, yeah, it's it's constantly racking your brain. Yeah. I was I was gonna say, have you seen the the girl that uh, beat Elden Ring with a with a dance pad? She, not only did she beat it with a DDR dance pad, a PlayStation Two DDR <laughs> dance pad. Oh my god! But she did it at level one too. There was no, uh, yeah, level one, level one sword, uh, not, or not an upgraded no sword. No way! Yeah, beat beat Elden Ring with a freaking dance pad. It is. <laughs> That's the level of like speed running and just people keep making these games harder and harder for themselves and then watching them triumph over it is incredible, you know. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I love to see where the future of this is going and like ROM hacks are still they've been around for a long time, but ROM hacks are still kind of I feel like still in the baby beginning stages because they're pretty niche to certain cat. You got like Mario ROM hacks. There's some mm-hmm. Donkey Kong ROM hacks out there. Metroid, Mega Man, to Metroid, Mega Man, Mega Man. But we haven't gotten into all of the games. You know, like what happens when it starts moving on? You know, into like, all right, let's start modding PlayStation games and like making like ROM hacks out of PlayStation mm, games. You know, yeah. or like N64 games when they finally figure out how to break that code. You know, it's gonna be in. I think they have. I think I do think they have some Mario 64 ROM hacks. But yeah, Mario sixty four actually has quite quite a few ROM hacks. Yeah, um, and uh, Bomberman does well. Uh, Bomberman sixty four has some pretty cool ROM hacks. I will admit, as, uh, I've uh, played some pretty cool ROM hacks. Uh, <laughs> um, I do not remember the name of it, and it's plaguing me right now. But that is a really cool game. Um, Bomberman ROM hacks. That does sound amazing. It's been yeah. so long since I've even heard Bomberman. Man. Do you have any videos of those? Do you have like a YouTube channel with any of these Bomberman? Bomber I wish. Um, that's a thing that I also needed to need to do is create a, I have a YouTube channel, which be kind of got created by accident. Um, which is really mm-hmm. funny because so I believe you. <laughs> a friend, a friend of mine was basically in a uh, a speed run event, and he was doing the category that I run, and there was a trick that was plaguing him. That's like one of the hardest things in the, in the run. And I was like, here, like, let me show you this setup that I do. And I tried to send it to him on Discord, but it was too big. Right. So instead of being able to put it on Discord, I just said, nah, whatever. And I made the video a YouTube video. And that was my first ever, like, quote unquote, YouTube video. Uh, it was just like a setup on how to do, like, a trick. Um, so I technically have a YouTube, but um, there's nothing on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Except it's that. tough because everybody when they make a youtube channel you know like you want you want crispy like nice edited like right w- like good production stuff like that but honestly i mean even just to keep a like a library of like your your footage and stuff it's good to just have a youtube channel put all your raw footage on there even if you're not promoting it or you know trying to push it or like grow on it you then you still have this this cloud of you know True. your pre- previous videos and stuff that you can always come back to. You can always pull footage from it. You know, and uh, it's not like Twitch is keeping it. Yeah, Twitch isn't keeping it, and and I mean, you, you can keep it on your computer and fill up your computer. But I mean, if something happens to your computer, then th- there goes right. all that footage. You know, YouTube is forever. Like, <laughs> it's True, not going yeah. anywhere. No, I uh, I really need to take advantage of of YouTube, and I'm kind of mad at myself that I haven't. Um, um, I'm trying to learn video editing like now, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to. Um, that, that's a thing that I've started figuring out recently. Um, Good. But I'm I'm trying to. I'm so I I want to sort of stick my toe in it. You know, like little bits at a time. I don't want to. I don't want to get burnt out on that because I feel like that's something that I could in, really enjoy. Uh, right. And not only that, like just you know, there's no discoverability on Twitch, unfortunately. And Twitch is a great platform for what it is. But there's not a whole lot of discoverability, um, so that's kind of what you do for. Like, I feel like most platforms, kind of, there's not really any discoverability anymore. Not unless you you have a plan going in, you know, right? Um, or you've just been doing it for so long that I mean, I don't know. I, I 
I don't know. I think you're right. I think it's it's hard to get discoverability on any platform. Hard, it's also, a hard market. <laughs> yeah, it's so it, it is very oversaturated. And on one hand, you want to be right. like, dude, this is amazing. I love how many people are getting into it and stuff. But I think a lot of people get into it for the wrong reasons. And for the, the wrong, wrong reasons, right? And the wrong mentality. And so I think it does kind of sour the pool a little bit. Yeah. You know? But and I, I, and and at the end of the day, like you know, it'd be cool to to be able to make money off of streaming but like i just sort of do it just because if i'm gonna you know play a game and and enjoy myself then i might as well be able to do that and have other people enjoy it too and maybe they might say something and spark a conversation and now everybody's having a good time Um, exactly you know even if you know nothing's really going on you know it's not it's not like the craziest like you know like me playing like hogwarts legacy which i don't know if have you played that game at all um, uh no no i, I haven't there's there's I a lot honestly, there's a lot of mixed tension with I, it with yeah, that game right now i i appreciate the world that like but i don't appreciate the person who built the world I, right um you know whatever um <clears throat> but that but i had to get a whole like graphics card just to play that game um uh, it was, uh, it was, the game's okay but like that, that's you know, what I that's what I heard. Not to, not to delve into it too much, but I heard they stole the UI from uh, from God of War, like like the world, like how the world was made and stuff is pretty much copy paste code from uh, yeah. from God of War. And then uh, no, maybe it was Genshin Impact. It was one. It was one of it was it was some other game that they like stole the code for and just like re uh, re imaged it on the yeah, outside. Yeah, it's, it's nothing special. Um, but yeah, we don't have to delve into it, but. Um, yeah, you know, I, you know, I've been playing that a little bit here and there, and like, what's going on? But like, it's it's fun to be able to just you know just kind of laugh at myself, um, uh, doing some dumb things, and uh, and and have slightly more commentary added. Um, where the chatters are being like, really seventy, like, I, really, like <laughs> I feel that. I, I mean, the reason I started and I got into Twitch was exactly the same. It's like, if you're going to play video games anyway, like in your free time or whatever, if you're going to play video games, Mm -hmm. why not stream it and hang out with your friends that want to hang out? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, that's that's my main goal right now. You know, like I, at one point, you know, I I was a full-time streamer. I did that. I gave it my best shot. Like, it didn't work out. It fucking broke me as a person and then like i it seems got... impossibly hard it, it is impossible it's not impossible but the amount of energy that you have to put into it and the amount of mental uh damage you take from it is probably not yeah. worth not worth it you know and a lot because a lot of it is luck too you can have the best looking footage you can have the best edits you can have the best personality all that, you know, there are, I can name 10 streamers off the top of my head right now that deserve to be partner and deserve to go full time that just don't get the attention because it's luck based. You have to be very right. lucky in this industry, you know, and so like coming back to it now and like because I'm passionate about it, that doesn't go away. Like I want to keep doing it, but I'm still trying to figure out what my goals and what my direction are for it. And really, like the only goal I have is just to build a community, you know. I want to build up relationships with my friends and and just build a community of people that um, like to hang out every night. You know, that's really yeah. my big thing. And especially this, the podcast is my baby right now because it's my opportunity to um, have these intimate conversations and to hang out with friends that I, I don't ever get to see or talk to because life is just so crazy and busy all the time. Right. Yeah, especially... Especially with the last, you know, three years, it's just been a whole, a whole shit show. Oh, yeah. People's plans have been, you know, flipped upside down, and yeah, the whole, the whole world is. And fingers is, crossed, uh, the world's gonna get better. You know, fingers crossed. It's, we're, yeah, we're slowly gonna get back to a, a, a some sort of normality. But it, I don't know, with all the controversial slowly shit happening. That's going on right now, it's it's hard to believe that the right yeah. people are in in positions of power. You know. So hopefully but, uh, we'll get those people. Out. I guess to, to take it to take it to an, on a little bit more of a positive note. Yes, um, please. To sort of more finish your question. Um, initially, when I started streaming, I was you know I thought it was all going to be about speed running um, or um, 
like something fighting game related because I was pretty pretty big into uh, Super Smash Bros at the time and like a couple other fighting games like Marvel vs. Capcom uh, and a few others. But so I thought it was going to be something related to that, like very competitive. But as I grew older, like uh, like, like let's say in the next four years um, after that, um, I started you know writing a whole lot more music and becoming a whole lot more active as a musician. And, um, and sort of my goals changed from that point forward. So I never really saw my, 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 my stream as something that I could use for like my own musical purposes, because before this point I had never, you know, thought of Twitch as something that I could be like musically creative with. I was just like, Oh, you know, I can, you know, be be this competitive player and you know show them that I'm good at these things you know whatever right and then I watched Tanuki's Dan stream for the first time um and was like whoa wait you can like you can do this like <laughs> huh like this guy's a genius and I was like wait a minute like this is the kind of thing that I want to be able to do um, and I, I love his energy. I love Dan as a person. He's such, he's such a cool person. Um, but like his, you know, ability to, and you as well, Opto, like I, I was introduced to you through him. Uh, well, um, I mean, it all flows in a circle. Cause like, uh, Dan was my inspiration to start, uh, streaming on Twitch. You know, I just fell in love with the formula. I like to play guitar and stuff and, mm -hmm. uh, play video games. And so like, I watched him for about three months and then I was like, you know what? I want to do that. He's inspired me. I want to do that. But it's also funny because most of my guests, that is usually their answer. Uh, when it's like, how did really? you get into Twitch? It's like Tanuki Dan. So no when, kidding. When his episode comes around, it's going to be funny to act. In, not funny, but intriguing to hear what his, like what got him into it. You know? I, yeah, I, I would love excited. to be able to hear you pick his brain. And if yeah. I, if, sorry if this is intrusive, but it, is it true that you know him IRL? Yeah, we I saw knew, like a picture we, of you guys like hanging out uh, and like on Twitter or something like a while a, ago. In a different life, he we he, yeah, he's my best friend. He lives like ten minutes down the road from me. Me and him have known each other a very long time. We've been friends like way before Twitch was ever a thing. In a different life, our bands played together, uh, played shows oh, together. Oh, okay, like, yeah. Me and, and me and him, uh, dude. Yeah, we go way, way, way back. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. I think um, we met. So if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to have to ask him, but I think we met for the first time. We were playing a private show at a pro skaters, uh, skate warehouse, uh, Dan Daniel Haney. We were playing, uh, our bands were playing together at one of those shows. And it was one of the funnest nights I've ever had in my life. We had so much fun. We just got That's drunk awesome. and played music and skated on all these ramps. And it was, it was a great time. That's was, so cool. That's so yeah. cool. But actually, so it's, it's funny that, um, that you say that a lot of people's inspiration have been Dan. So, so Dan was like the inspiration to be myself. Like I, I had always wanted to be a streamer forever. Um, and actually Clipper, um, I don't know if you, if you know, yeah. Clipper, um, I love Clipper, Clipper is I, actually I, the reason that I'm a streamer. I bullied uh, Clipper into, into following me on Twitter. I had to, I had to, <laughs> to bully clipper i was like every time i'd pop into uh, her stream i'd be like hey when are you gonna follow me on twitter when are you gonna follow me on twitter I'd just give her shit about it and she finally uh, she she did one day and then i just never mentioned that ever again never brought back the joke and i should have so but no so I, I do funny. i love clipper she's awesome well i happen to be following clipper on twitter and she happens also be following me so nice you know, love that love that, love that for me consider um, yourself lucky because it's tough to get that follow from clipper <laughs> no, she's she's really cool, and um, I I was a Clipper viewer from you know the time that she was like ten, maybe fifteen viewers, and um, you know, it's like saw her grow as a streamer, and at one point, like had had expressed my view, like, you know, man, like I, I I've kind of always wanted to do this, and like, but I'm just like not sure how to do it, and like, and Clipper was like in the middle of a of a run, and she was just like, all right, look, seventy. All right, you just need to do it. Just stop talking to me about it because I know how badly you want to do it. Just, just do it, yeah. Do it. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. You're right, Clipper. <laughs> and the like, literally the next week, I did like my first stream and fell in love with it and have been, you know, 
I wish I could do it more often uh, with with more content in mind. But yeah, I've I've been in love with it ever since. And yeah. um and That's, and more so, so it more pulls so recently, you in. It pulls you in, and it never lets you go. At least right. at least the re- at least the real ones. I feel like the people that go in with the wrong mentality are the ones that after so long they just right. They're just because they if, just if, never come back. You know they don't I even come watch. Into it, you know, trying to trying to make money or you know like the, I'm gonna do this for like a living like like this is how I'm gonna pay my bills like I that I can imagine how that mental toll on you goes just by like pressing this the start streaming Super button like stressful. oh my god like I have to make money on this this has to be clean well but yeah you, like going you, into it with like a with a mindset of just like I'm just gonna dick around and enjoy myself and you know if if people come into the chat then that's cool but if right. not who cares. I had, if I had not pressed the live button, it would have been the same shit anyway. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, the that's hard the, part, though, is even even if there's nobody there, the, this is the hardest part about being a streamer. Even if there's nobody in chat, you still have to keep the energy talk. up. You got to keep talking yes. and keep that commentary up. Because if you don't, I mean, then anybody that randomly pops by isn't going to stick around, you know? Right. So. Right. That that is the hardest part. That would be the only advice that I would give anybody is like, dude, it takes a long time to get people to start coming in the door, but until that point happens and after that point happens, you have to continue to communicate. To keep and, them engaged. And talk to yourself. <laughs> right, yeah. Or talk to them or yeah, somehow somehow keep it keep it alive and keep it yeah, keep it fluid. Keep it fresh. That's, yeah, keep it fresh. Um But yeah, like the 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 more so recently, um, you know, like I said, um, Dan just kind of opened my eyes into the a way I could stream um, that I've always really wanted to do, but never really known how. And I, I'd be sort of scared to attempt it, but I've kind of have already done that in a sense. But when I before I start before I stopped streaming uh, and moved, I had my stream set up right next to my really nice piano which is now in the uh living room of this new house that we're in okay um and i i'm also we're we've been in the process of like having renovation and so like we've been like moving things around but i'm i'm about to have my keyboard back next to my uh computer again which is which is like which is really nice because i can't you know i can't play and stream at the same time. Play from the other but room. But that yeah. was, <laughs> but that was the beauty of the old stream setup was that like you know I, I had like a, um, a redemption where it would be um, improv song uh, of what topic and you like you come you name the topic and that was right, the redemption right. and then I had to you know just come up with something on the spot with random chords and and it was usually a good time and really random and it was fabulous, but. And I was like, that, that was, let's say, I don't know, maybe about eight months ago when I was like, let's just add this to the stream and see what happens. And within the first week, somebody had redeemed um, a song about Bugs Bunny. And right. I don't know if you know anything about the multiverse, multiverses game by WB. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like, a, it's like a similar to like a Smash clone, but it's kind of different. But right. Bugs Bunny was very, very broken for forever and so we made the, i made this really silly song about bugs bunny and it's a it's the most fun i've ever had on camera in my entire life yeah um and, and so now have, you need to, you I need to wanna, keep trying to recreate that yeah you gotta exactly get your like when, as soon as i as soon as i got that like little like sense of like oh man like finally like live content plus music like this this is what i want like this is what i've been trying to make like forever Right and now and and now I can't make it and I'm like I want to make it again. So so soon when I have the the setup proper and you know keyboards right next to the to the PC, then we'll be able to start doing that again. Um, Absolutely, I cannot wait but, to see that again because like dude, there's the, there is a very there's a big hole in the the Twitch market for music streamers because it's hard. It really is. It's it's, right. it's it's hard to get started. It's hard to do. But like just off the top of my head, you know, you got Dan, you got uh, like Chess WC. I don't know if you know him. 
Chess is awesome. He plays drums and like all these other sorts of instruments. Oh. Lugi Tanuki uh, plays guitar and piano and stuff like that. Oh, on stream. Yeah, I've seen them. Dude. And so like all these amazing people that I that I fall in love with and I love their streams and stuff. And I think it's because the music, you know, the music really drives that personality. It shows like a different side of yourself. The improv aspect of it keeps you on your toes because you never really know what's coming. You don't have to worry part. about yep. being DCMA'd or copyright stricken for <laughs> writing goofy songs about Bugs Bunny, you know? <laughs> right. And so I mean, it's... if I if I could if I could pull it up and and show it for you, I I would. I actually do. That that is a highlight of my channel. Um, uh, and I I kind of want that to be like the if if I ever make a trailer, that would be either the outro or the intro to the to the trailer is like a bit of that song. Nice. Um. But uh, the whole thing, just yeah, make your the... minute long channel trailer, just that clip <laughs> <laughs> or or write a new one, you know, like put the put the keyboard in front of the camera and just play like a new like a like a new improv song or something that's like, you know, whatever. I'm seven deadly sins, but I go. That's kind of what I wanted for the trailer initially was was uh, was it was going to be an improv song and I was going to be like in a robe with like a corn cob pipe and then there was going to be a green screen behind me of like a, a fireplace and I'm just playing playing like some weird lo-fi and like doing some weird like hello my name is 70 or there something like I, like very some classy. very like Bo Burnham-esque like and then I was eventually I was just like mm. that sounds like a lot of production value that I'm not ready for <laughs> <laughs> I've, you'll get there. You'll get there. But if, we're, you, we're, if you ever need any help, <laughs> if you ever I, yeah, need I probably help, I got will. You. <laughs> but the thing that I'm most interested in, I think, is less the idea of like. I mean, obviously, what I just described, I want to do that more, you know. Um, but the idea of like collaborations with other streamers to me is the most interesting than than anything I could be doing on Twitch. Yes. Um, because. There's so many, it's like, like we were just talking about, there's so many people on this platform and being able to, you know, this right now, like this right here, like this, this is the pinnacle in my opinion of like content because we are, we have, we are creating content together and, and it yes. is, it is more wholesome content than it would be if we, either one of us are making it alone. Exactly. So like, yeah. hundred percent. The whole 100%. aspect of collaboration is what intrigues me the most, I think on Twitch. And I, and I, if I could. For example, make music with you or Tanuki Dan or like whoever, like yeah. my life would be complete. Like those are the kinds of things that I would, that would be like the pinnacle for me for it, like it, it, what it I is, would want out of my channel. It is incredible. And it is one of the most amazing things to get together with people and to plan these things out. But oh my God, again, the strain it is no, I can so, imagine. It's so hard to plan because being able to people. figure out both of your schedules and being in alignment and like and you know making sure like the content's good. Like, yeah, no, I can I can definitely see how it's a how it's tolling. Well, like and especially um, booking like months out, like expecting people to remember that or like to put it on a schedule or right. and even reaching out to new people. You know, like there's a lot. There's so many people that like I'm associated with that I want to ask to be on the podcast, but I'm also like. Mm -hmm. Like what? If, I don't know. In my mind, just it's mental illness speaking, but it's just like, what if the, what if like that offends them somehow, you know, or like, no, what if, you know, I or totally what? If, get that. Or what if they're like, oh no, gross! I don't want to be on your podcast, you know, like so that those thoughts are always lingering things too, and so like, it, yeah. I don't know. socializing, especially on the internet, is such a weird thing because you like there are people that you click with instantly, and then uh, the best way to put it, it, just like in real life, there are people that you meet that you're like, I like this person. I want this person to like me, but I feel like I'm going to try so hard to get this person to like me that it's just going to drive them away, you know, or it's going to yep. be really awkward and weird, you know. And yep. so, like, trying to have that persona and be comfortable around everybody is a really difficult task. And I, I think that doesn't get talked about a whole lot, you know. That is very, very, very real. Um and I, I even have one of those people um, in, uh, in in some Twitch chats. There, there's a few of those people. I'm like, man, this person's cool. And so, uh, and so, I'm gonna, I made it a person to talk to that person. And then I made myself seem really silly. <laughs> um, you went for it. Anything in life. To, I just wanted if, to talk to the cool guy. I just, if you don't go for it, if you don't go for it, 
And then, then, and, and then people are like, 70, you're dumb. And I'm like, yeah, well. Yeah. No, no, you're yeah. not dumb. You're not dumb. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. but I mean like you you miss a hundred percent of the shots in life that you don't take you know exactly and so like I am I am an advocate for that and I am trying to be more social as well especially with with discords and being on other people's discord servers because there's I'm in so many discord servers I'll join discord uh, servers too. but being a part of them and actually like being in socializing in those because like here's how it goes you know like I have a little bit of time before I go to work you know and it's like okay well I can pop in and say hi or good morning or whatever but my fear that mental illness is like I'm gonna say hi and then I'm not gonna check this again for 12 hours and then I'm gonna come what back what if they said something and they're, and they're, they're gonna think to me and... yeah they're gonna think yeah. I'm the asshole because I said something everybody responded mm -hmm. and then I ghosted and never responded back and so like it's just trying to come to terms with that and be like That's... you know what People That's have lives. They me. they understand that you go to work and have a job. You don't have to respond two seconds after they message back. You know? That thing has literally <laughs> happened to me. So I don't worry. I speak from experience. When I say you I get it. What we're talking about. <laughs> you you understand. But that I mean that is. I think though, be acknowledging it and talking about it and laughing about it and also you know just being aware of it. You know it helps create those baby steps in the future to get out of that mindset as well though and i mean that can also be applied to so many things in life you know <laughs> like you can you can talk yourself out of almost anything you know but talking yourself into something is like way harder to make happen but when you do it you're either pleasantly surprised or you're like wow that sucked i'm just not gonna do that again <laughs> Let me let me not let me not do that anymore <laughs> So you're yeah, you bringing very quickly. You're bringing back the piano. You have plans to do this, uh, I guess, after renovations are complete. So, like, I mean, mm -hmm. that's so that's pretty much your goal is just to start playing more music on stream and and same thing I'm doing. Just try to build up build up community. You don't really have any aspirations yeah, or I like mean, wanna go full time I or wish anything with it. I like if I, if there was if you asked me reality aside. What is your goal on Twitch? My answer? Partner. Okay. Same. Do I there think that's reality? <laughs> I'd have to try really hard. <laughs> you know? And it's like... And I understand that, and I get that. Um, and I would have to keep a YouTube relevant and uh, be a little bit more active on Twitter and... Am I ready for that? I don't know. Um, I like to say that I feel like I would be, but at the same time, the whole aspect of content is very much like a, this foreboding thing to me. So, like, I don't know how I would stay relevant. Right. So, I don't think I that's, could hit partner. That's very real. I, that's that's um, a very real concern because, like, you have so, to keep pushing the ballot every single right. time, and you have to be producing something every single time that's going to bring people back. I have but here's. I'm going to show my no, no, confidence. Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm going to show my confidence here. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that if I were to talk ab nothing about nothing else, if I were to talk about nothing else but wanting to hit partner and every day like sharing my goals and like where we're at in progress and how we're doing this and asking people to support me and like messaging people and being like, hey, you know, like I'm trying to hit partner. I'd really appreciate the support if you hang out and stream. And just being that guy, like I really do think – that enough people like right. me that I could do it. But also at the end, I think that as soon as it happened, all of that support would drop off. Would at, go away. Right. At, because... at the expense of like bullying my friends into helping me do it. And it's, it doesn't feel natural. You know, and I feel the exact same way where it's like, I feel like I know enough people that I could make that happen maybe. But right. like, I want it to feel genuine. Like these people want to be here. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and, and if are and are here for the content and are here for the streamer, you know, and I and I do get that. You know, sometimes you know the occasional, um, like one of my, one of my favorite people, um, that is almost in my stream every time, um, had told me recently that they were that I'm their fa literally their favorite streamer, um, and like they were leaving and they they gifted me like 10k bits or something, or it was it was ten dollars worth of bits or nice. It, it wasn't some insane thing, but it was like. And and it made my day like like it doesn't matter that like I don't have you know seventy viewers and I don't have partner numbers, 
But King of Bozos just gave me those biddies because he thinks I'm funny and he enjoys it when I click the go live button. And that right. in and of itself makes everything else go out the window and it's, it's worth it. It's the best. Fe- it is the best feeling. It is the best feeling. And it, and it could be a hundred bits. It could be a thousand bits. It could be 10 K right. bits. Like any, any support of, I think that's what gets lost in translation with the monetary side of it. You know what I mean? Cause like, you're excited for anything. You're excited for right. Any, yeah, even any if it was of... a, a, like one cent. Yeah, it's just yeah. that the fact you you went through the 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 arduous task of converting your dollars to bits. I'm so sorry that you had to do that. That's really annoying. Yeah, um, but you did that for me. Exactly. I don't care that it was <laughs> however money it was, but it's be- you you gave it to me because you thought it was worth yeah. it. And yeah, that 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 feeling is amazing. Yeah. Um, so it is. Uh, you did it. You did a good job. You did a good job being a good host and providing a, a cool space that somebody wanted to hang out in, and they wanted to say thank you. They wanted to go above and beyond and be extra and say thank you, and that's incredible. It is such. But a I want to. But I also want to want to feel like at the same time that I'm making something that's worth that. Too, exactly. Right? Like, I feel that. Like that. Like so. Like when I received that, I felt so bad because I was just playing a game casually, and it's like I'm I I I haven't made any content or whatever. Maybe, maybe I made him laugh or something. I don't know. But like I like me as the streamer, I'm like I've done nothing for you. Like I feel terrible. <laughs> you, you provided good company. You provided and, excellent company, and and they wanted to show their appreciation and say thank you. You know, so I, yeah, I'm the same so. way. I'm happy just having people in chat, you know, like right. something I always struggle with is keeping chat talking, you know, like on a, it can, on a, it can be a struggle sometimes. I, even on my worst day, like I, I feel very lucky and fortunate that even on my worst day, there are still people hanging out and streaming and watching. It don't, may only be a couple people, but I still have a couple people that hang out and watch. Uh, but on those bad days, like it's just the lurkers and nobody's talking, you know. Yeah, so, that's what happens sometimes. It does. It definitely does. But on the good days, you know, and like there's a bunch of people in chat, like trying to keep those people's attention and trying to keep it fun and exciting and talking like it. It is a struggle sometimes because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and they're not going to stay engaged, it's not yeah, something they that they like, then they're not going to stick around, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. So we, we very much uh, dabble in psychology being on Twitch. Oh yeah, we deal with the brutal side of psychology being on Twitch too. Yes, it, it, <laughs> and, and it's always it's always it's always your own mind too. Like you're always your own worst enemy. Cause Very like, much so. The, the I things... don't know. If, I'm sure you've noticed this as a streamer. I definitely did. Like when I first started streaming, there were so many things like that I realized about myself after watching a bot or like you know like like me playing a competitive game and realizing like man I didn't like. I have a problem, like, like keeping my lid on sometimes, or you know, like th- these little things that you just sort of like realize about yourself that, like, right. oh, I, you know, I need, I like, I need to focus on this, or like, you just like are sort of forced to deal with your shortcomings yeah. as a streamer. Um, or you, or you see things through with, yourself or through chat. Let's let's turn up, put a positive spin on that. Or you see things about yourself that you can appreciate that you didn't really know were there either. So like it, it that, that can, is very true. Can be a positive thing too. Often that I I'm gonna compliment myself here, but uh, often that happens to me where there will be a part of a stream or or a vod or or whatever where I'll say something and in the moment live when it happens, I'm like, wow, that was complete gibberish. It didn't make any sense. And I probably look like a stupid fool and then I'll see it. I'll see the recording of it and, or I'll think there's a long hesitant space. I'll think there's like a really long, quiet space between one sentence and the next where I'm like, wow, that was really awkward. And then I'll watch it later and I'm like, wow, that actually wasn't bad at all. That was actually pretty good. And I feel good about that. But at the in the, the moment, I don't. So it's, it's like you you're know. yeah, your intrusive thoughts talking. Exactly. Like, exactly. This wasn't good enough. You're yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. You suck. What are you doing? And like, it, it's fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. Right. That was, we talked about that earlier while we were playing um, turtles. Like, right. There's uh. Oh shit! I lost my train of thought on that. I had it and then it was gone. We we were playing turtles and we we talked about how um. I'm gonna get it. 
I'm going to get it. Every episode has one of these oh, the moments. The intrusive thoughts were winning. <laughs> the intrusive they're, thoughts they're, were winning. They're currently winning right now. They are. No, I, there's no intrusive thoughts right now, but I had a really good point that I was going to make, <laughs> and now I can't remember what we were talking about. But it had, it just had something to do with... Uh, whatever we were talking about. So we're going to, we're going to, we're moving on. We're moving on now. Cause I, I'm, it's not going to come to me. It'll come to me in five minutes. Okay. Yeah. When, when you, when you take a shower later, you are like, God dang it. You're like, damn it. I got a message seven. Cause that's what I was going to say. No, I, I was, I was just going to say that, uh, the, like the, you, those intrusive thoughts come in. You think that you're doing a bad job and you're really not doing a bad job, but you think you are. And so that can lead your demeanor at, after that point, you start doubting yourself and becoming a little bit more quiet and like right. that can be bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that happens to me for sure sometimes. And, and, and I'm, I've become more aware of it. So it happens a lot less now. Be, yeah becoming um, aware of it practice practice with anything i mean i i just watching 13 episodes of the podcast i've seen how progressively better and how many how much less the moments like i just had where it's just like oh this is kind of awkward for a second don't happen there are plenty of episodes where it doesn't happen and you can just see the <laughs> ebb and flow Hey, sometimes like, we just have a brain fart and that's okay it, you know, yeah that's okay <laughs> that is okay it's it's kind of ironic that we were talking about intrusive thoughts um and that was that was this, when the the train of thought went away. This, this was not a planned bit. I swear, if I could remember exactly what the sentence was leading up to me going, "Oh yeah, it's like we were on the stream earlier," that I would remember exactly what the thought is. But now I I cannot remember what it was. Somebody said something, and it triggered that in my brain, and now I can't think of what that trigger was. So brains be like that sometimes. Brains be like that sometimes. <laughs> We have talked about nothing but streaming tonight. Do you want to talk about anime or something? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like the literally the only th other thing that I do uh, outside of video gaming. <laughs> Absolutely. I, well, yeah. I mean, I, we, if you want to talk about more of your personal life, we totally can. But I, I just didn't know if you wanted to dox yourself or or put out any more personal <laughs> information into the world. People need well, to watch the stream for that. If they want the personal side, that's what the two hours of game is, is for beforehand. <laughs> Well, I mean, um, if if you know if if the streamers and uh, the podcast listeners don't don't know who I am just yet, then maybe we can take a little bit to explain who I who I am at least to myself. Because uh, for the longest time, I don't know if other people feel this way, but at least when I became you know like twenty one and older, like as you know a real adult. Trying to find purpose in life is a very big, you know, you can have as much fun and do, you know, a bunch of cool stuff and enjoy yourself, but finding purpose is like the most important thing in like an adult's life. Yes. And for me, it was, it, it took a, me a long time to find purpose and I eventually found it in uh, Emergency Dispatch where um, I had lived, you know, worked a million jobs in my life and well, mostly food. Um, so I, I've, I've cooked in many a restaurant. I, I can cook you a damn good meal. Um, nice. But, um, he can, he, but I never really... Late, like... Everybody, he can cook you a steak and save your life in the same night. It's true. <laughs> it's true. And I'm going to keep you calm, collected the whole time while I'm on the phone with you. Telling yes. you how to do CPR. Um, but it was, a, it was my first job that I, you know, just took pride in and felt like... I just, I finally had a reason, like, for what I was doing, and, uh, and it just, it's kind of funny to me also that I was using my voice in that, um, <laughs> which for the longest time, I thought I was going to be a vocalist growing up. That's okay. what I went to school for was, I was a musician. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, I was, uh, I went to a school for the performing arts and uh, I was in chorus and I also did like theater as well. Um, I can hear it now. I can hear it in your voice. Now that you've said that it just clicked into place. I was like, you have a perfect deep, like, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you thank you. I, it, uh, I, I, I quite literally was that radio voice talking to, talking to the amber lamps, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the, the amber lamps and the, and the fire trucks telling them where to go and what to do. You're um, watching WKAP. 
take a left turn to <laughs> to res- <laughs> You're going to one one hundred and twelve uh, Elm Street to find a heart attack victim. Wear a raincoat because oh, it's going to be it was, rainy out. <laughs> it was a struggle trying to keep some of those people calm and collected when they're telling you that their husband's leg was bitten off by a shark. I you can can't. imagine how some of that. Um, is that a real call? Some... Did that really happen? To oh you? yeah! Oh, that was a real call. Um, uh, yeah, guys, yeah, ma'am, could you explain, off? ma'am? Could you could you explain like where exactly you're at at the pier? It's come quick, my husband is like it's been by a shark. It was, just, it was so difficult to get any information out of this one. It, is that oh. just because people assume that like you as the dispatcher can pull up their GPS location from their phone? Yes, number? people assume that like you call from somewhere and like we have your pin. But that's not how this. That's not how this works. Right. Uh, we, we have to like manually ping your location. Um, now the, the cell phone tower will ping to, uh, the actual 911 call center, like, the um, like the, you know, government 911. But the way that emergency calls work is that 911 gets called. And then once 911 has the information, it gets dispatched to, the individual agency of wherever that is, like whatever county that's in. Okay. So 911 knows your location, but the county doesn't. And for for that information to ha- like be passed back and forth would take longer than me just saying, what is your address? Yeah, what's your location? Where are you? So I'm on the beach so, yeah. somewhere. My husband's leg just got bitten off by a fucking shark. Yeah, so like that that that, that <laughs> bit of information is very vi- valuable. Like, okay, cool. I already have medics on the way to Tybee Island in this example. Um, but where are they going? Like, please, like, where near the like which side of the? Are you like ten miles down this way, or like are you on this end? Like, so, so yeah. Um, so wait, hold on. Before we continue, did did the, <laughs> did they recover the leg? Did they get the leg back, or did the shark just get to keep the leg? Um, there there was no leg. Oh, um, oh God, I'm smiling, but I feel horrible for these people. I can't. Oh, just imagine, yeah, um, just imagine getting your leg bitten off by a shark. That is awful. Uh, yeah, uh, I, that's awful. But I bet you it's a funny story Ooh. now because it's like, oh, we were at the beach and we called yeah, the, the guys dispa- alive. We called the dispatcher alive. and they were like, no, we can't ping your location. What's your address? And they're like, oh, we don't know. We're at the beach. What is the <laughs> exactly. what is the ad- what is the address for the beach? <laughs> Look, luckily, it was very it was like fairly simple. I was like, what is the closest landmark to the pier? And they were like, oh, it's a Ferris wheel. I was like, oh, OK. I know exactly which part of the beach you're on. But like. But 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 that's why I say like most people don't understand how nine one one works because they just assume that you call nine one one, you're on the line with somebody, and then like people are already en route to your location. That ain't how this works. <laughs> you need to tell me what's going on so I get you people there. Like, come on now. Right, right. I uh, I, was, I feel like I have to tell an embarrassing story now. So oh. just just to counteract because I laughed at the leg thing because it, it was it was funny to me. But I, I hope that I hope that dude is doing very well now. I just want to say okay. that you you kind of have to have a dark sense of humor to have had that job. So I'm yeah, yeah I, I laughed at yeah. it. Too, don't worry. So here here's an embarrassing story about myself. When I was younger, we went mountain climbing. There's a mountain near here, and uh, it's usually probably like an hour and a half, two hour climb up to the top of the mountain. Well, we decided that we were going to go like after five o'clock one day. And when it gets dark on a mountain, it is dark. There is no light. You cannot see where you're going at all. So I decided that I was going to be a goofball and go down the hard side of the mountain and beat everybody Uh down to the other side. Well, somewhere I took a left turn and ended up at the bottom of the mountain. I did get to the bottom of the mountain, but I ended up two miles into the Uh woods like the opposite direction of the parking lot in the road. And I have no oh idea God. where I'm at. So it finally, like they're, they've been waiting for me forever. They call me, they're like, where are you? And I'm like, I have no idea. I was like, I am so far in the woods. I don't even see the mountain anymore. Cause it's dark. I have no, I don't the Whatever markers are on these trees are not markers that I recognize. And so I ended up sitting there for like three hours. My phone almost died waiting on like park rangers to find me. 
And I'm telling this story because of the GPS thing. Because, like, I just assumed they could be like, oh, let's ping your phone. We know exactly where you're at. No. It was, like, a really long, drawn out, like, okay, well, where are you? What, where did you make a left turn? What are the colors of the markers? And oh, after about an hour and a half of searching, this four-wheeler, like, Jeep four-wheeler thing, like, pulls up like kind of like off in the distance and i'm like oh my god i'm saved like because it got pretty sketchy out there it was pitch black you know and there you know there's wild animals and stuff out there and i'm just like yeah. some, my phone's about to die i'm like i'm just gonna be oh stuck out here i'm gonna have to survive the night out here with no supplies nothing and a dead phone so and that was embarrassing so like the this ranger lady picked me up and and drove me back to the parking lot and i had to be like yeah i'm sorry i'm so sorry to waste everybody's time like yeah it was very embarrassing but that's okay we've all we've all been through some dumb shit and done some dumb shit that's okay it's true but it's the people like you that i got to help when i was a dispatcher that like kept me going oh like, dumb I, dumb I, kids I, that I got saved, lost in the woods not I the shark guy guy's life <laughs> Yeah, well, shark guy, yeah, shark guy's alive, and uh, and that's pretty cool. I, I'm pretty, cool. I'm pretty thankful for that. Well, I, I, I hope he's still alive. I don't know. He, I mean, um, we're we're gonna for the sake of the conversation, he is still alive. He was alive he's, after the call. He's and doing that's well. What's relevant? <laughs> he's doing well. He's doing awesome. He won the lottery. He's a millionaire now. He like helps other people who have been maimed in shark attacks. Uh, he is he is doing great. <laughs> he's 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 awesome. <laughs> Uh, all the proceeds uh, go to uh, wheel charity <clears throat> yeah for shark for shark attacks though wheel charity for shark attacks dude uh so it is we are at the hour mark but we're not done yet because there is something that i like to do with all of my guests oh yes at the end of every episode i like to put you on a i'm gonna put you on a podium in front of a million people and it is your moment to say your piece in front of a million people. If you had the opportunity and the light shining on you, what would you say to those million people? Wow. Could be Hello. anything. Hello, one million people out there that don't know me. And if you do know me, spectacular. If you don't, hi. I am the goofiest goofball you will have ever met. I will probably make you smile. And I will hopefully make your day. And if you'd like for that to be a daily occurrence, please subscribe to my Twitch channel. <laughs> it's perfect. You're, you're the first person in 13 episodes to give us the subscribe to my Twitch channel thing. <laughs> I thought I thought it was the adequate plug for a million it, people. It, so. it was about uh, time. It was about time because, like, I mean, even if you get, dude, you get a hundred subs out of that. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> Man, that, yeah, that just made my whole month. Yes, it made the whole year. Yeah, well, good. I mean, because a lot of times, you know, people will either go like mental mental health awareness or like what whatever type of awareness, or they'll just say like be kind to people. Like three or four people have been like, you know, be kind, which is a great message. I love that. I love ending the episode on like something positive. But also, uh, Niku Senpai, his he just said mommy milkers. Like that was his, and it was so good. It was so good. Because I could just imagine him getting up in front of a million people and just going, mommy milkers. And so now, <laughs> a million people are going to see you go, hey, I'm a goofball. Subscribe to my Twitch channel, which is badass. That's awesome. So I love that. <laughs> I love it. I, I had love to do it. it, for, it. I had to do it for the meme. <laughs> it's, it, you asked me that question, and like in my mind, I was like, what would Ludwig do here? And that's what Ludwig would ask for a million Twitch primes is what Ludwig would do. Yeah, so. yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Ludwig has for a long time been like my 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 streamer idol just because he's he, he's in the melee community and he's a, a big goofball like I see myself big jokester and pretty pretty smart guy and also enjoys speedrunning so very very similar in in a lot of aspects yeah so, easy to yeah, idolize I, I asked myself what would Ludwig do he'd he'd ask for the Twitch Prime so he'd ask I, for I, I had to. <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you guys know that you can sub to my channel for free uh, using Amazon Prime? <laughs> did you know that you could take money directly out of Jeffrey Bezos' pocket? Yes. Specifically $2.50 and it's give it to me? You totally wow. can. Whoa, crazy. That is amazing. Uh, I love it. Well, love I love you. <laughs> Thank you again so and much I love you, for, for being Otto. a part of this 7D. It is it, so much for having me. This was awesome. Absolutely. I can't wait to do it again. But you will you will get a call back. I am going to call you to be on the show again. Um, I plan on wrapping back around to uh, a lot of people that have been on the show. It was an absolute honor to have you on the show. It's an honor to call you my friend. Um, I I look forward to a bright future with you. And, and sorry, it sounds like we're getting married, but like, Doing, I mean, I, mean doing, I am holding your hand right now underneath my desk, so like that's okay. The, the viewers can't yeah. see it though, so I mean, they can look. now, they know, they know the secret. Uh, but yeah, dude, I just look forward to doing a lot of stuff with you in the future. I hope that Friday night for the uh Jackbox game, I hope that you're able to catch the, the end of it and hop in and yeah, play some games with us. Um, because that's that's what it's all about. It's all about community, it's all about lifting up our friends and uh bonding and just cementing these relationships. So uh, again, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I there there are no more words that I could think off the top of my head other than thank you for having me. This has been a blast, and the fact that we got to relive a little bit of my childhood through TMNT yes! was yes. pretty fucking fabulous. And then we completed the whole game too. So thumbs up all around. Thumbs up just, all around. Awesome. This is an awesome night. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I, I brain farted again because I, I normally announce whoever my next guest is, but next week is a special guest who is going to be here in person. So I, I didn't want to spoil the surprise. I almost spoiled it. I'm not going to spoil it. You guys no are just going to. Yeah. Stay you guys, tuned next time. Boy. You, you, you two people are just going to have to show up for it because uh, it's going to be fantastic. But until next time, go follow 7D. It's uh, twitch.tv. It's 7D. Uh, go find his Twitter. Go support him. Go show him some love. And until next time, this has been Wonder Bathos, and good night. <laughs>